Hey, it's Greg Lamb here, bringing you your cloud accounting news, reviews, and how-tos. Recently, QuickBooks Online has added a new feature called Rules, or Bank Rules, and this allows you to set up your own conditions for categorizing bank and credit card transactions. Previously, the best that QuickBooks Online could do was enter the last known transaction for a contact. Now, this can work in certain situations, but there's so much variability in transactions that this won't work all the time. That's why setting up rules can be an important time saver, especially for businesses with lots of predictable transactions. You can find the bank rules if you go to Transactions, then Banking, and then click on the Update drop-down box and choose Manage Rules. A very common expense is a bank fee, so here's how you'd set it up. First off, I'll click on New Rule. Then I'll enter a rule name. After that, you choose whether it's for money out, which is an expense, or money in, for income. This is a fee, so I'll choose money out. Then you choose which account the rule will apply to. Actually, you don't need to pick a specific account, so I'll just let the rule apply to all accounts. Next, you choose a condition to look for, and you have the choices of description, bank text, or amount. I'll choose description. Now, the next drop-down asks whether we want a partial match, an exact match, or a negative match. I want to be fairly flexible, so I'll choose contains, which means that the description will need to contain the keywords I'll enter. I'm looking for when the description says Bank of America, so I'll type that in. I'll add another condition, because I don't want just any transactions. Regular fees are always under $50, so I'll add a condition for an amount. I'll make sure it is less than, and that would be less than $50. Something important to be aware of is that transactions have to meet all of the conditions. It can't just be one of them. Once the conditions are set, I choose the payee and category. The payee will be Bank of America, which I'll quickly add, and the category will be bank fees. There are options to add a class or a location for tracking purposes, but I won't do that. You can also attach a memo to the transaction, which I also don't want to do. I'll now save this rule. To see it in action, I'll go back to the bank and credit cards page. And here you can see that the rule works. The name of the rule applied can be found over here, Bank of America Bank Fees. If I clicked on the rule, I'd be able to see and edit the rule. To accept, all I need to do is click on Add. That was an example of a simple rule in action, but I want to dig deeper because there's a lot more to rules than just that. So let me go and create another rule. So what I did was create a rule to account for a bank loan, where we know the principal amount is fixed at $250, but the interest portion is variable. So for the rule, I made the amount greater than $250, but less than $350. The transaction always has the text, bank loan number 258, so that's what I'm looking for. I'll skip past entering the payee in category so we can check out the split button. This offers up the chance to split the transaction based on a fixed dollar amount or a percentage. Since I know the principal is $250 a month, I'll choose $250. Then for the remainder, I'll choose the loan interest account. So what will happen is the $250 will be allocated to the loan principal and the rest will go towards the interest on the loan. If you have multiple fixed amounts, you can continue to add lines. However, you can't split up the remainder based on a percentage. That being said, you're probably not going to run into a situation where you'll need to have a transaction split between a fixed amount and multiple percentage amounts. I'll now add this rule. And then I'll go back to the banking page. Huh? The rule match isn't showing up. I have two transactions, one for $464, which shouldn't be matched since it's over $350, but the $326.83 one should match. I'll go back to the rules page to check out what might be going on. It has to be one of the conditions, and the most likely reason is that I shouldn't have made a rule based on the description. I'll click on description and change it to bank text. And this is a little bit of a bug. The payee name seems to disappear sometimes, so I'll enter it back in. And then I'll save this. Back in the banking page, I now have a match for the rule. Now adding it is as easy as clicking on add. So here's the tip. If you want the rule to scan the entire description found in the transaction, choose bank text. If you only want the cleaned up name that QuickBooks Online thinks is the payee name, then choose description. 
Okay, so what would this look like if rules were matched up to multiple transactions? Well, here's an example of it matching five transactions. When I quickly scan everything, it all looks good. Except for this last one. It says Loan Shark Loans, but it's for $5, which should be impossible since the rule setup is supposed to only work for amounts over $250. If I dig into the transaction, the rule is actually for the Bank of America, so this has to be some sort of bug. I think I'll just add it and see if it works out. Actually, I'll add all these transactions at once by selecting all the transactions. Then I'll go to Batch Actions and accept selected. Cool, all done. Now, I'll just double check to see about that $5 transaction that had Loan Shark Loans as the description by going to In QuickBooks. Hmm, it does say Loan Shark Loans. Let me check this out. Well, it is made out to the Bank of America and it is for bank fees, so I don't know why Loan Shark Loans is shown as the description. All right, that's QuickBooks Online's rules in action. It could be a really great time saver. What I'm a little unsure of right now is how stable it is. There was that bug where it didn't save the payee properly and the other bug where the wrong description was being displayed. It's also brand new, so it could just be a matter of time for all these little bugs to get squashed. Something that I do feel is missing is that there's not enough flexibility in the rules. I would love to be able to choose among all the conditions or any of the conditions. I know that with franchises like Staples or Starbucks, the name may display differently on bank or credit card statements depending on the branch visited. Like if you were buying something from Staples, it might say STPLS as an abbreviation or it might say the whole name. It'd be nice to set up the rule to accept either name. This would be similar to how aliases work with the desktop reconciliation. On the other hand, I know that QuickBooks Online does try to process these store name differences, so it may just be smart enough to do this on its own without the need for more complicated rules. Overall, it's nice to see this new functionality, and I hope QBO continues to fine tune it. And that's it for this video. Make sure to subscribe for the latest in cloud accounting. I'm Greg Lamb, aka the Small Biz Doer with the Slitter Group, and I'll catch you on the flip side.